Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna go right into the video. So this is Bhakti. She is one of my co-workers when I worked in Qatar as a makeup artist. She's so gorgeous. I love her features and her complexion is really beautiful. I've already prepped her skin with a cleanser and moisturizer beforehand. Now I'm starting with this video with Makeup Forever Step 1 Skin Equalizer Mattifying Primer using a stippling brush. Primer is an important step to have this barrier between your skin and makeup. It will protect your pores from all the products that you will be using. Next, the eyebrows. Now, she really has good pair of brows, so I just want to define them rather than reshape them. I'm shading them first using this Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade in Soft Brown. For the brows, I always want to use a uh, color brown even if my client's hair is black, I'd reach for a darker brown color. I'm not done yet with the brows, I will finish them later. I'm done concealing the brows and eyelids and just blending it in using a, a beauty sponge from Beauty Blender. This will absorb any excess product and make everything even. Now you may notice that I didn't set the concealer before putting the eyeshadow because for me the eyeshadow itself will set it and it makes the eyeshadow last longer throughout the day. I'm using the Morphe 39A Dare to Create palette and chose a warm brown as a transition shade. It looks messy now, but please trust the process. <laughs> now I'm putting a darker shade of brown and just blending both colors alternately, making sure that there are no harsh lines. I'm now putting a, a little bit of black shadow to make it a bit smokier. Now please remember that using a black eyeshadow could be very tricky. It's so hard to remove when you make a mistake, so make sure you put little by little and build up. It's always better to add more than to remove. After that, I went ahead and sprayed Fix Plus on a flat shader brush before I pick up a gold shimmer eyeshadow. I always do this because I think it makes the pigment more intense. Then I go back with a dark brown shade and marry them together so you get a gradient effect. Again, not done with the eyeshadow. I'm going to uh, finish the face first. I'm using this orange concealer by MAC. You might think I'm putting too much, but it's a light formula. So when I blend it with a sponge, it will lighten it. By putting this before the foundation, it hides dark marks and dark areas of the face. Without this step, there, uh, these areas will look gray after you finish your makeup. The reason why I did the brows and eyes first before the foundation is because I didn't want any eyeshadow fallout to ruin the base. This will help achieve a cleaner look. After blending out the orange concealer, I'm now putting on a foundation one shade darker than her skin tone to balance everything out. I'm using MAC Studio Fix NC42 using a flat foundation brush. Mm -hmm. 
Then I put this Wet n Wild Photofocus Foundation in Golden Beige, just mainly on the center of the face. Blending them uh, together with a sponge, you can see I'm using a very light hand. I'm letting the blender do all the work. Don't forget the neck. For cream contour, I'm using MAC NC55 to bring back dimension on the face since we already covered it with foundation by putting on the outer parts of the face. It will act like a shadow and help narrow the face down or make, make it seem smaller. For concealer, I chose a color 2 to 3 shades lighter than her foundation. I wanted to cover and highlight as well. I'm using Maybelline Superstay 24 hour concealer in light medium. This is a warm shade. This is a technique I like to do for all my clients wherein I blend one side first. Later on, you will see it one side first and immediately set it with powder to prevent it from creasing. Here I'm using the L'Oreal Free Match Powder in Nude Beige. Then I used Laura Mercier translucent powder to set the rest of the face. I chose translucent so I won't cover the real color of the foundation and contour that we put such hard work on. Powder Contour by Kat Von D. This is the best contour powder in the market for me. I love that it has warm and cool tones plus highlighting powders too. Just lightly dust some of the warm shade on the areas where we put the cream contour. This step is not necessary because we already did the cream but this will make your contour uh, last all day long. Spraying Fix Plus to set the powders in place and not make it look dry. Fix Plus can really do wonders. I don't know what I'd do if MAC discontinued this. Everyone uses it. 
While waiting for that to dry, I continued doing the brows first, then finished the eyeshadow on the bottom part before moving on to blush because it will ruin the foundation if you put anything on it while it's wet. Once dried, I went straight for blush. I'm using the e.l.f. Cosmetics palette in dark. I placed it on the apples of her cheeks because I want to show them more. I already put the mascara and false lashes off cam, so now I'm putting highlighter. I'm using Ofra Cosmetics in shade Rodeo Drive. Also putting this on the nose bridge, Cupid's bow, chin, forehead, the inner corners of the eyes, and brow bone. I did the inner corner eyeliner off cam too. I used Inglot uh, Gel Liner number 77. Lip pencils are used to make the lipstick last longer and prevent it from creasing or bleeding. Not literally bleed, but uh, you know what I mean. To prevent the lipstick from going down the lines of your lips. I'm using MAC Pencil in Strip Down and topped it with MAC Lipstick in the shade Taupe. I'm not putting any gloss on today because the eyes are already quite heavy and I want them to be the star of the show. And that completes the look. Just spraying a little bit of Fix Plus to put everything and fix every, everything in place. Here's a quick before and after. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. Also follow me on Instagram for more makeup looks. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe everyone.